Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video, we're going to do a variation of the shift to sprint so that instead of having to hold the shift key, you can just tap it to turn it on and then tap it again to turn it off. So this is how it's going to look. Right now I'm walking. When I tap the shift key, it turns sprinting on. And then when I tap it again, it's going to turn sprinting off. All right, so let's go ahead and dive in and get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is locate the starter player folder. And then inside that folder, we're gonna locate the folder that says starter player scripts. And inside that, we're gonna be adding a local script. Since we're gonna be detecting key presses on the keyboard, we're gonna be using the user input service. So let's go ahead and start by saying local user input. And that's gonna be equal to game colon get service. Inside the parentheses, we're gonna put user input service. After that, we're going to define a variable for the local player. So we'll say local player. And that's going to be equal to game dot players. And then we're going to say dot local player. The next thing we're going to do is define two variables, one for the sprinting speed and one for the walk speed. So we'll say local sprint speed. And I'm going to set this equal to 50. And for the walk speed, we'll say local walk speed. And I'm going to set that equal to 16. The default walk speed is 16. So by setting the sprint speed equal to 50, it's going to be about three times faster than the normal walking speed. Okay, and we're going to create one more variable, we'll say local sprinting. And we're going to set this equal to false. And we're going to be using this variable to keep track of whether our player is sprinting or walking. Okay, so after we do that, we're going to start with a function. We'll say local function. The name of our function is going to be begin sprint. Inside the parentheses, we're going to pass two parameters. We're going to say input, comma, and then game processed. Okay, we're going to start off by saying if not game processed. Then inside the if statement, we're going to say if input dot user input type and we're going to say if that's equal to enum dot user input type dot keyboard so we're looking for input from the keyboard then what we're going to do is we're going to say local key code is going to be equal to input dot key code and then we're going to say if key code is equal to enum dot key code dot left shift then so this part right here is how you're checking for a particular key on the keyboard so if you don't want to use left shift but you want to use a different part of the keyboard then you can change this part right here so inside this if statement we're going to start by saying sprinting is equal to not sprinting so basically this is just an easy way of flipping the value of it so if it starts off false, it's going to turn it into true. And if it comes in true, then it's going to come out as false. Okay, here we're going to say if sprinting. So that would mean if sprinting is equal to true, then what we're going to do is we're going to set the player's walk speed equal to the sprint speed. So we'll say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed. And we're going to set that equal to sprint speed. And then we're going to make an else statement. So this would mean that sprinting is not equal to true. And what we're going to say here is we're going to say player dot character dot humanoid dot walk speed is going to be equal to walk speed. And you notice that these two look very similar, but this one is referring to the variable that we created up here. And this one right here is a property of the humanoid, which is called walk speed. So make sure for this one, you have a capital W. And then for the other one, it's a lowercase w. And finally, down here at the bottom, we just want to connect this function to the event. So we're going to say user input dot input began colon connect. And then inside the parentheses, we're going to put the function, which is going to be begin sprint. All right, and that should be it. So let's go ahead and test it out and make sure it's working. Okay, so my player starts off at a normal walk speed. When I tap the left shift, 
my player goes into the sprint mode. And then when I tap the shift key again, it goes back to the normal walk speed. All right, so that's going to be it for this video. I hope you enjoyed and stay tuned for the next one.